I'd be interested to hear what it was like in that room because there's been a lot of tension. There's all, I think there's always quite a lot of attention on the FST monthly meetings, but this March one picked up a lot of headlines because it just felt very frosty and it feels like we're at a real crossroads now in that relationship between the main supporters trust for the Fulham fan base and the club. And it feels like everything that's been developed over the past kind of six or seven years, the memorandum of understanding, it's all kind of reached ahead. And it it does feel like this is not where I think anyone wants to be. I'm sure neither the club nor the supporters trust want to be at this kind of loggerhead position, which it now feels like it is. Absolutely. I think that that's fair. Obviously, we want to have a constructive relationship with the club. Um, that's why probably we get so frustrated when some of the un- some of the questions are not answered and when we don't get full transparency of uh, insight into some how some certain decisions are being made. So in that sense, that meeting was, again, us going back and saying, look, there are certain issues that fans feel very strongly about. And we did that survey among members of the trust, asking them about their view in ticketing. And, you know, it's very clear, 65% said that the increase in ticket prices had negatively impacted the relationship of the club. 6%, 6% said that they felt heard on tickets and you know, the club reacted um, uh, appropriately to the whole discussion about being priced out. Um, and we just brought these points again to the table saying, look, this is not just us, a couple of guys from the trust raising these issues with you because we are in a kind of private war with the club or whatever. It's just this, this is what people want to hear, want you to hear. They want us to bring this to the table. And I think, as you can imagine, that conversation was difficult and, and fractious. And I think it's in diplomacy, they call it frank exchange of views. Um, so, 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 you, you know, you, I guess that gives an idea of how, how went it well, but, yeah. um, but, but I think it needs to be done also because, I think we had this really weird point sometimes with the trust, at least that's my perception as someone who's connected to Fulhamish, to Twitter accounts, to all sorts of social media, where the trust is being criticised by, by the club as being too hawkish, too negative about the relationship with the club, and, you know, coming up with problems. And then the fan base goes, oh, you're doing nothing, you're just going there for a nice cup of tea. By the way, I've never been to a cup of tea with Alistair McIntosh. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, but it's, it's just that, that element where, where I feel like we really need to talk about these issues. And obviously... The problem with so many of these points is that we can have, and we do have, and I think the trust, myself, everyone else, that is, is very grateful for a constructive relationship and a kind of operational level. So when we talk about problems of congestion, as we had the problems with Liverpool game, or ticketing, or touting, or whatever, we can have a meaningful conversation. You can see certain small things change, and that that makes you feel better. I know if you notice, there's like now notices all over Stephen and Road about touts and operation, don't, do not buy tickets from them. That's something we repeatedly asked for, then it's a minor, minor, small thing. Obviously, the dispute, the the disagreement is where massive discussions are about tickets, pricing out, the the future model, the sustainability of the club. And that's where it's just so much more difficult to find some sort of agreement because obviously we, as fans, come to this with a kind of heart-first approach. I want to be there, I want to support the team, I don't want to be priced out, I want to pay as little as I can to the counter game and the club goes, well, actually, you know, we, we have to look at the economy of that. We have to look at how we can uh, sell it. And then there's just, that's just, it's just difficult to find some agreement on that. I mean, it felt like reading this as well. Like I was quite shocked that, well, I, I, I completed the survey um, and for the club almost straight off the bat, just to say that the survey was, was flawed. It seemed like a bold, Bold point of view, just completely almost. It's, right. a bold, it's a pretty bold point of view with sort of no evidence to back it up. It's like, well, if you can show me why you think that, then fair enough. But just as a well, as an outright statement, it doesn't it doesn't. Well, add the up. notes the notes said um, Alison McIntosh thought that the survey was seriously flawed, asked too many leading and biased questions, and was primed with the word protest when advertised. I mean, do you agree that you thought the survey was flawed? I don't think so, no. Obviously, you know, hindsight is a great thing. We can probably phrase certain questions in a different way. But when you look at the survey, it does say that, that the things we ask you about, these are not, this is not the view of the trust. We're just 
giving you a sentence, agree or disagree with it, tell us what you think about it. So when we ask about different ways of protest, that doesn't mean we necessarily want to do that protest. One of the questions there was about disrupting a football game. I never want to do that personally. I know if, the, if that's a trust position, if that's just me, I would never want to disrupt a Fulham game ever, 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 unless that's like literally the, the worst possible scenario. We'll still ask that question just to have a kind of sense of how many people do feel that way at the moment. So I think it's important to give people a range of views and range of um, questions and range of kind of options to choose from. So again, uh, there's a sense that, and, and, and I, I think it goes back to what I said earlier about how people feel about the trust and about the club and the lack of communication there. Um, you know, one of the questions was about, do you think that protests, if any, should be directed at um, the management of the club and not the team? And I thought that was a fairly uncontroversial question. Obviously, I think most people would say, yeah, that's got nothing to do with Jean Poligno. We don't, we don't expect him to join the protest. Um, it is about the way the club is run. But that was seen because of other things happening in the Fulham kind of scene, was seen as, are you endorsing abuse of management? Are you, are you suggesting that people should go after management or should, you know, send angry emails or they should call up people in the ticket office and say horrible things? Obviously not. I mean, obviously, I think there's a, there's a line to be drawn there. And I personally feel very strongly about it. Perhaps as someone who's also getting lots of abuse on social media yeah, for, yeah, so, yeah. for all sorts of different reasons, that this is unacceptable. And I think that's why the minutes note, there's, there's a sentence there when we say we absolutely do not condone any abuse of anyone. There's a suggestion that, you know, people say, call, call the ticket office and say things that we wouldn't want them to say. Of course, that's wrong. And I think it's, it's important to say it. But the question itself I don't think you can say that the survey is wrong or illegitimate or whatever because you misunderstood the question that was asked. Yeah, I, understand yeah. why, I understand why you feel strongly about it if you are on the receiving end of some of that. I, I 100% understand that. But, but that's not what the question asked about. No, also, like, you know, just to go back on that kind of disrupting a game point, and I agree with you, and obviously you want to see games for, play out in their entirety and be, you know, you're, you're there to watch a game of football, right, and enjoy yourself and all of those things. Also, I look at the fact that the Bundesliga and the Zweite Bundesliga have just had a protesting period where games after games after games were interrupted and the DFB have backed down on their original investor deal because they were like, it's bad for the image of the game. Now, I can understand why there's frustration in all of these different parts, right? But the fact is that because this was, this was achieved and because that frustration was built over that visible protest and frustration of games and spectators and sponsorships and all of the above, that's where it hits. And I don't think the DFB back down on this deal unless these games are impacted. So I agree with you on principle is that obviously you want to watch games, but I think that the idea that if people are unhappy with a club that they feel, you know, has been a part of them for, you know, however long, whether you've been there for a hundred years or, or 10 or one, you know, if you feel that like the club that represents you is now a different place to where it used to be, and that's not to say that things can't change and people can't move with the times, but you do have, you know, the right to be like, well, I do not feel this represents me anymore. Absolutely. And that, that's what a, these questions are asking, not should you, you know, ring up the ticket office. And, yeah. and, and if you are, then I'll, just as a heads up, that's completely misplaced anger. It's not yeah. the employees here. The, it's, it's the senior management. Yeah. And, and the employees do a lot of really brilliant work. And just to say, it, I mean, I'm, you know, I understand that anger because I'm angry as well. I mean, at the yeah. end of the day, I have to buy that season ticket. I have yeah. to start, spend all that money. That 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 does annoy me. And all the other things that we can surely talk about uh, annoy me. But I think, um, so that's why I understand that anger. But I'm just, I just feel like we, both sides of the discussion, and that's both probably us in a way, and the club need to change something about it because that, that's just road to nowhere in, in a way. Um, and, you know, when I when you say... Uh, giving the German example, part of the problem with what we we see at Fulham is it's not only Fulham. It's but it's the way the whole game changes and the whole the whole Premier League situation of English yeah. football changes. Um, you know, just today you have announcement, or I think yesterday you had announcements on season ticket prices in at Manchester City when people going angry about I think six percent rise, much lower than what we had at Fulham, and now now you find yourself in a slightly unusual situation where. There's an alliance to be struck between Fulham fans and Manchester City fans about yeah. being priced out. So I think I think for some of these questions, you need a much bigger solution than just the kind of trust to one single club yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, also, it's something that I think the German football in particular does really well is that yeah. fans put aside club tribal you know allegiances when it's the well-being of the game on the line. And I think that maybe fan bases are too tribalistic in some ways. And that's not to say, look, 
the atmospheres in Germany and the rivalries are incredible, but they're also a bit like, okay, at times we might just need to put this aside in order to, to, to for all of our well being. I just don't know if we're just past that stage already and past that stage of where German football feels like it belongs to a fans and, yeah. and English football doesn't. I think we're getting to that point. And I don't know if you agree with me, but I think we're getting to that point in the UK as well. You know, we, on the weekend, you had Spurs funds showing the banner, save our seniors about the concession tickets for seniors who are being priced out of the stadium yep. after 40 years of supporting the team, obviously. The removal of senior concessions, I, I couldn't That's believe just, they've yeah. done that. I mean... Uh, Criticised Fulham. At least, uh, at least we haven't gone that far yet. I mean, that that's that's a disgraceful. Oh, yeah, we, we tweeted our support to that. Obviously, Spurs fans were happy. Then I think West Ham joined in as well. I think there's a sense of solidarity there, and people saying, you know, it's not just one, two, three clubs that do it. It's becoming much more systemic, much more problematic in that, that sense. Yeah. So I'm hoping that in a way, these problems that we see are not just Fulham problems. And, and, and I think they can be probably resolved at a kind of different level. Obviously, we now have a regulator coming in at some point with the new legislation. We have all of that happening. So I just hope that gives us an opportunity to restart that relationship a bit. But obviously, the, the, I understand that anger. I fully understand that anger. I mean, one other um, point that was raised in this meeting, and I find this such a frustrating argument, but it just seems to be the line constantly, Um that it says the trust consistently undervalued the enormous financial support that the current owners had given the club. And this frustrates me endlessly, this position, Jack, that just because the owners pump money into the club, and I get it, football economics and all of that, without the cons, if they if and if they pulled the plug tomorrow, like there would be problems. They do bankroll this club. Yeah. But it does not mean and it literally goes against the very first thing that Shahid Khan said, that he was going to be a custodian of this football club. It does not mean that you just get to do things completely unchallenged by the fan base. Like, that's not the relationship. That's not how it works. And I find that incredible that we're still just doing this basic argument. It doesn't add up. Like, it, 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 without being funny, like, yes, of course. One, I don't think that's undervalued at all. By anyone. I think everyone's pretty grateful for, you know, the, the transfer spends, the investment, all of it. I don't think the, the difference is if you'd said to everybody, OK, cool, we're not going to build a new Riverside stand, but your season ticket is going to remain the same price as the next 10 years. I think everyone would be like, yeah, fair enough. You can't just be like, oh, cool, we built it. So therefore you have to pay for it. That, that's not how it works. And also, like you come into a seat like this at the football table, like nobody comes into this being like, cool, I'm going to make a load of money out of this unless you are literally the Glazers, I suppose. But, like, nobody else, and that is a very unique situation in Manchester United, nobody else is going in going, yeah, I'm going to make plenty of profit out of this. Like, you know, it's one of those things where, you, where people buy into clubs because it gives you a certain one level of prestige and a seat at the table. Two, it gives you ins and outs with, with different people. And three, because it's an incredibly, you know, amazing thing, I imagine, to, to own a football club and to be responsible for its operations. I don't think that that means you're like, okay, cool. I'm going to make loads of money out of this. So the position doesn't make sense. It, like it, it's a, it's a nonsensical argument. And also, you know, to kind of add to all of that, we've talked about it time and time and time again. Ticket prices are such a low element yeah. of what the club makes. Like it doesn't, there's, it's just a completely separate argument that is being utilized for the wrong reasons. 